All right, time to start another model, and this is going to be another one of those uh, wacky vehicles uh, from the Aurora line uh, way back when. Uh, I'm not going to go too much in the history of it, but basically this was a series of six monster vehicles uh, from Aurora, and uh, reissued by Polar Lights. I got a whole bunch of these at once. I'm still missing one, trying to complete the whole set, but uh, this one's the Mummy's Chariot. And uh, I've been looking forward to this one, although I know that there's a lot of challenges building it. Uh, a lot of people reporting a lot of issues with the build, so it might take a while. Um, I actually want to do something like a kind of a diorama w of this one where I want to, you know, put it on, uh, you know, a base. I'm not sure if this is going to be big enough. I might have to get another piece, but anyhow, a base. And what I want to add is at least one thing, you know, on a sand... Um, sandy surface as in a desert i want to add like an obelisk like a monolith uh, an egyptian with egyptian hieroglyphic gri, hieroglyphics and all that stuff so uh hoping to add one of those uh, originally i was going to just carve one out from uh some foam but then i realized uh i think i can do a better job with my 3d printer and i started looking at a few files that i might print for that that and maybe a uh, palm tree. I looked at some DIY palm trees uh, videos and maybe going to add that. So let's take a quick look at the insides. Okay, uh, this was originally all sealed, but I think somebody resealed it because uh, it's all open over here. It looks like somebody took a whack at it before. I hope all the pieces are there. But uh, one thing I failed to mention that this is a glow-in-the-dark model. You can see all these pieces. The complete thing is all glow-in-the-dark. But I don't care much for glow-in-the-dark. I paint over it. So uh, don't look for any uh, glow-in-the-dark effects when I'm finished over here. It's got the uh, classic, you know, simple instructions. Very few pieces. Uh, going to build it as is. One thing I may add, and I really, you know last year or even the year before i picked up some these halloween at halloween these extra snakes now you can see there's a whole bunch of snakes already in the kit there's three here there's actually a small one on the engine but again maybe with the diorama i may be able to use uh, some of these if i if need be and you know just add a few more uh slithering snakes <laughs> uh i'm gonna not i've seen some people try to paint this with this uh, blue mummy uh, as on the box, the box art. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go with a traditional mummy, kind of like what I did with the um, Bride of Frankenstein. I like how that came out. And the only other thing I don't like about these things, they, sometimes they, these cars are really, really weird. I mean, and that's okay. But these these wheels, they're, I don't know, they look like flower pots or something like that. So I might switch the front wheels for something that looks more like a traditional wheel. So uh, that's it, and uh, we'll see how I take it from here. Okay, I just want to say I gave everything, uh, you know, a little soap wash, all the parts, took them off the sprue, uh, tried to look and see if we have everything. I think we do. Be careful. Some of these parts are really, really small, and there's a lot of parts here. There's about 50. Uh, I didn't count, and the uh, instruction sheet doesn't have them numbered, but there's uh, quite a lot of parts, so... Uh, this is going to be a lot more, you know, more work than I originally thought. Um, so far, the only issue I have is this bone over here, which is an axle. And uh, it's supposed to be straight, but it came, it was bent in the kit. So a little repair job there. But aside from that, I think I've got everything. Lots of really small parts, like this really small snake over here. You know, crowbar, pick and spade and uh i'm not even sure what this is you know roller skates for one one of his legs coming up and uh you know these are kind of like bandages flowing bandages and things like that we've got a kind of a medical kit and a canteen and a whole bunch of really weird stuff so uh again the only thing i think i'm going to change so far is the front wheels i'm just not crazy about this uh, you know flower pot design or whatever you want to call it uh so we'll probably get something uh, like that. Maybe actually I'll strip off part of it and keep some of it, but not having it just a wheel like that. Or or maybe put some rubber around it if I can find some. But uh, so far so good. Just a lot of parts. And uh, oh yes, and I want to mention that the paint scheme, uh, I want to keep, you know, the uh, like King Tut's head over here. Uh, 
gold, uh, and there's going to be a lot of gold in here uh, because of the subject matter. But at the same time, uh, I don't want to make everything gold, and I do want to keep like this hieroglyphs on this thing over here. So something that I want to do, so a color that when I do a wash, uh, all of that stuff will pop out. So start building now. Okay, before I give you an update, uh, I just want to say I met up with the uh, model car minion. Uh, we exchanged a few models. Uh, he explains it on his channel. Basically, I got a gave him a, he gave me a drag hag for my mama baby baby mama uh, weirdo, and uh, he gave me this nice badge indicative of his channel. Check out the model car minion, and you'll see minions. Now the progress on the model. So I've worked a lot on the body. Uh, again, the biggest part, just like in the uh, bride, was basically getting it together, sanding, putty, sandy putting, sandy putting, to try to make it look like real bandages and getting rid of the seam lines. Some seam lines were easy to get rid of, and some hard. Just a lot of work getting there. But most of the hard work is done, so that's a positive side. Now his face. Um, a lot of people, when they do the bandages all in white, they kind of do his face in white too. Uh, it's a wrinkly face, but it's definitely, a, you know, a head with, you know, hair, ears, uh, nose and everything. So it really shouldn't be a bandaged face. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do here is, again, kind of like the bride, where I took a shade of flesh color, but made it really light. And in this case, it would be even lighter. And to try to keep it as a pale face uh, and there's again there's a lot of wrinkle lines so that'll be it coming out in the wash anyhow and hopefully uh, figure out what to do with the hair because the hair is definitely there but you can't do you know white body and black hair it's too much of a contrast so not sure what I'm gonna do with the hair but uh, not too bad there uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the wheels I, I mentioned I don't like these you know flower pot as I call them or flower wheels so what I just did was I took a couple of caps uh that i had some uh you know covers uh bottle covers and uh bottle caps and i think i can make a wheel more look like a wheel and keep the same you know dimension because it'll still still be the same support point here and just have that embedded in there i still file this a little bit down and make it look more like a wheel so i've done that hopefully i could use that now the Colors for the chariot, I mentioned I want, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going to be gold over here, the trim, uh, you know, King Tut's face, the emblem and things like that. But I really wasn't sure what other color to use uh, for the rest of it. And then I, I realized I did some uh, research, you know, looking at reference photos and, uh, you know, using only the most authentic academic uh, references for uh, historical accuracy, uh, like Lego. Uh, I decided that uh, a lot of pictures, well, I saw a lot of pictures that had this blue over here, this uh, kind of sky blue from Tamiya X14, and it's almost perfect color that will go really, really well with the gold. So that's what I'm going to use on the chariot for, you know, the bulk of it. And uh, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with the wheels. Do I make them black, brown, or something like that, or uh tan or so uh you know they won't be blue i, I think that was the uh, reference uh, cover over here on the box where they have that sky blue here so and, and again here you see a, an example where they use blue for the whole body including the face so uh that's not what i'm gonna do with that i'm gonna make the chariot blue and uh progress from there okay i'm back at the table over here uh as usual uh, Things have been really slow on my end, a lot happening right now. So by the time you see this video, it'll be quite late, uh, you know, from the previous one. But at least I'm slowly making progress. Uh, everything's been primed in white over here. And uh, what I've done is I've taken a few things that I've already started painting. Mostly I've done the uh, body. This is done in... Uh, in white after the white prime uh, mostly I've gotten all the seams that I've uh, you know the seam work that I tried to get especially when it comes to the bandages so tough uh, unfortunately I didn't really notice it but part of the model itself not a seam is uh, an embedded line on the legs over here and had I noticed that before I would have puttied them up too because again there's you know bandages going right across it doesn't make sense to have that line 
but I don't think I'm going to go back and, you know, putty it over, prime it and paint it again. I think I'll leave it as is. I just got a few touch-ups on this thing over here. I've also uh, painted the face uh, flesh. I did mix it in with some whites, but uh, as you can see, uh, it's still, uh, I think a little went overboard on the flesh tones. Um, I want to lighten that up. So probably when I do the touch-ups on this, I'll give this uh, a little coat of white to hopefully lighten the skin tone because I, get, I want them to be very, very pale and bleached and all that stuff. Uh, I've gotten the uh, blue that I wanted to mix in with the chariot, you know, uh, the colors. And again, what I really want is the combination of blue and gold. Now, my standard go-to is actually Tester's Gold. I really like this uh, Tester's Enamel. And... I may be using that, uh, but you can see there's a lot of fine detail, so I'm wondering if I'm actually better off using a marker for that. Unfortunately, I think if I mix the marker and the other gold, I mean, they'll, it'll probably be a mismatch. I'll do some tests on the side to see how close it is and whether I want to go with just one or both and uh, which one is actually best suited. Now, things to consider is... Uh, you know, there's going to be gold on the wheels and things like that, and you have to start looking at... You know all these little slats and you know which one's gold which one's blue and what are maybe another color i'm thinking of silver so make sure you look at that and think that out before you start to say you know where you know what color is going to be where and what do i need to paint like so i realized afterwards doing this stuff that this needed a coat of blue too and then the dots will be gold and things like that uh now, when it comes to this thing, I really want it to shine, and I was debating if I should actually, instead of just painting it gold, well, my first thought was painting it gold and then using translucent blue on the uh, headpiece over there to make that stand out, because, you know, it'll still shine through the translucent blue, but then I was actually thinking maybe what I'll do is actually take my Molotov Chrome over here and then just use translucent yellow as you know kind of like a gold uh, i think if i do a few coats of that it'll actually look you know a little darker and then some translucent blue and if i do the translucent i mean the uh, chrome here i was actually thinking i can make this these little lanterns uh, that go out the front of the car look better by doing the same thing actually using molotov chrome for the uh, light pieces over here and then using a translucent yellow and that should you know really shine so slow progress, but uh, uh, at least it's progressing. <laughs> All right, we're back at the chariot bench over here, slowly making progress. Uh, the first thing I wanted to talk about was uh, the paint and the gold, basically. I mentioned I had a whole bunch of things I wanted to do in gold. And uh, my go-to testers that I was saying was so great before wasn't so great this time. Uh, I had a lot of problems with it. Uh, I used it on some pieces, uh, but it, it kind of just flowed too much. And I'm, I'm still having problems where this, you know, it didn't seem to be drying after days. And uh, it flows so that I still see the undercoat base blue over here. So almost there. I think I need another coat, but uh, it was a little bit disappointing uh, that it wasn't as good as it usually is. One thing I did notice that, uh, or compared with the uh, some of the markers, uh, this marker, these are both dollar store markers. This one was really bad this one did a really good job i don't know it's called studio metallics uh, or metallics in french over here but uh it did a really nice job over here uh getting you know the embossed uh emblems on the uh, chariot and a few other things where i used it like the dots on the on the um on the wheels and uh, it worked really really nice so again this is a dollar store a good dollar store pen um the I mentioned I want to get this uh, look before I didn't what I didn't say was I want this like King Tut look and this worked out exactly as I hoped uh, I did an undercoat with the uh, Molotov uh, chrome pen over here uh, oops chrome pen uh, the Molotov um, chrome under it and then I used the uh, uh, Tamiya paints the clear blue and the clear yellow now you can't mix them because again you'll get green if you do an undercoat of just doing it all yellow and then put the blue on top. I thought I'd have an, an issue getting it into those grooves, but I really didn't with a little fine brush, and that came out really nice. I might give it a little black wash to have the eyes stand out and things like that, but I was really happy with uh, how this turned out over here. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, really really nice. Uh, 
I did notice that there was a few places where I, when I was cleaning off the flash, I missed a few things here and there, not too much, but again, this is, this is something to be careful with in this kit. There is a lot of flash in the little, you know, nicks and crannies and grooves. So be careful with that. Um, and then I wanted to talk about one last thing. And this was a few hours work. The obelisk. Uh, I mentioned I was hoping to make a, a kind of a diorama with an obelisk in the back. And I found some 3D um, uh, STL files for printing. And I ended up choosing this one. Uh, what I did was I scaled it to the size I wanted. And then I split it in two so that it was a little more efficient of a print over here. So half here, half here, printing, printing them at the same time. It's not perfect. And, and actually my... My printer needs a tune-up, and I, I bought a new bed. I got a new nozzle, but then uh, rather than doing it, I said I actually want that, you know, kind of like jagged edged, you know, slightly imperfect uh, edge over here, the surfaces, because it's supposed to be, you know, carved out in sand and things like that. So I purposely did not do my upgrade before I printed this, and uh, it's quite. I'm quite happy with it. Again, this has to be all sanded down so that there's a perfect fit over here. I do have to clean up some of the. Uh, you know the, uh, the prints over here the emblems uh that are engraved uh go in you know with a little um file or something to clean them out but all in all uh, i think it'll look really nice once it's primed and painted and stuff like that and glued together so uh, i will put the stl file in the comments there are a lot of them out there but i chose a particular one so i'll put that in the comments if somebody wants to use the same stl file all right, as you can see, I'm making some progress over here. Uh, a lot of like small pieces here and there. Uh, I still have to give you know a wash to the body. I did repaint them where there were some areas not as uh, well covered, and gave them a second coat there or third coat. Um, face is coming along. I'm not too thrilled with you know the hair. Uh, I'll see if I can darken, put some streaks in there. Um, one of the issues with this kit is it's really some unclear where some of the parts go and you can see over here this is inside the carriage there's supposed to be like the stool going up over here there's supposed to be like the handle uh, for the uh, you know steering wheel it's got a little uh, notch there but there's no you know hole on this side where to put them so I'm probably going to do do that last because that's supposed to go in close to the hand and, you know, he's supposed to be leaning over. But I've already heard from a lot of people who built this, uh, you know, when you look at their videos that this does not fit very well inside. Like he's not going to sit on the stool at all. If you're lucky, you can position him in such a way that it, it, does, it doesn't look too awkward, but it, it is an awkward position to begin with. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, I mentioned at one point I thought this was a crowbar. It's actually a bar that's going to go to the fuel tank, which is in the middle here. I'll probably replace this with actual wire because I got some blue wire that I could coat with some gold stri uh, stripes. So again, fitting in with the motif. So getting coming along nicely over here, but quite a lot of things to be worked out for the actual build. Uh, I wanted to talk about the obelisk over here. Uh, I did a lot of sanding on it. Uh, some you know edges internally uh one thing i i noticed is whoever designed the stl which is it's a fine stl it's workable but what they did is you'll see that the track uh inside over here is thinner here than it is over here because what they did is this was originally uh you know perfectly rectangle when they designed it and what they just did is stretched out this end so again the gap stretched out accordingly on this side as opposed to this side so uh, again it's it's okay for what especially for my purpose uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is I mentioned I believe that I want to build a palm tree as part of the diorama so what I did is I uh, went outside grabbed a stick and there's a bunch of videos on different ways of making a palm tree and uh, I wanted a curved one because it's a palm tree and what I'm gonna do is one technique is to use twine over here and you just wrap it around and that kind of looks like you know a palm i don't know bark if you want to call it that and then you, you know you sand off all the little bits uh the, the the twine that's coming off over here so i got to make it a little thicker over here and then work my way up and then the palm leaves that's a little more problematic uh i'll reference two videos in in the notes where i take 
I'm going to take, you know, half of one, half of the other. One was the string part over here. And then the, that person used paper for the palm leaves. But I don't think I want to go with paper. And, uh, you know, I looked at the dollar store. Uh, this is kind of a leaf. And I thought I could, you know, cut them out over here. A little thick for my preference. I'll see if this is workable. If not, uh, you know, you use a... Uh, plastic uh leaves that for you know floral arrangements and stuff like that from the uh, dollar store some of them have you know the perfect vein configuration that looks really really nice and again you cut it out to the shape of a palm and uh you know drilled a hole over here uh for that and also there was uh one that took some uh made fake coconuts <laughs> i actually have some that I molded, I don't know if they'll come out uh, with some clay and we'll see if that becomes rigid enough. And then you coat it up with, uh, you know, bits of coconut fiber and things like that. So uh, I'll see if that works out, but one way or another, we'll have some sort of a tree back there. <laughs> okay, one thing I failed to mention uh, was that uh, I like this head. It, it looks a lot better than the picture I showed in the uh, earlier process, but I really like this head and I want it to stand out. So one thing I've done is I've made this little bracket so that it's kind of like an L shape so that, you know, because this is curved, he's, he's actually looking down and I don't like that. So this little bracket I made um, will prop up that head. So it's either looking a little, you know, uh, skyward or, you know, straight at least so you can really get a good look at him. And I mentioned I also made the coconuts. So these are the coconuts with, you know, dollar store clay. They've already hardened. They really look good. So uh, we'll see. I made a few different sizes to see what I want to put, you know, what best size that'll be for the tree that I make. So we'll have a few coconuts in there. And that's it for now. Okay. Um, it was bound to happen given the uh, subject matter. But uh, I can say with, you know, 100% certainty that the... Uh, the mummy's curse is real. <laughs> uh, basically, what happened was a uh, stupid mistake on my part. I was doing a wash on this. And I'd seen some videos where people, where one particular uh, video YouTuber, was using uh, oil-based washes with mineral spirits or white spirits. And I said, okay, I'll, you know, I want to try that. Uh, but that's fine for other things when you're using like uh, hot glue guns and things like that not with um, glue for styrene. And basically after I had done the wash, uh, it started to come apart or slowly, uh, you know, hairline cracks along the seams and I could see it was going to unglue anyhow. So I tried to, you know, put clamps on everywhere and to, to, for the most part that worked, but I had a particular clamp on this arm over here and it just shattered like into eight pieces, both the left and right side of his right arm. Luckily I was able to recover. I got all the pieces or you know initially thought I had all the pieces, did a little kind of like a puzzle putting it back together again, saw there were a few pieces, piece, other pieces missing, looked around the table, found them all, little putting here over uh, and I got it back into more or less the same shape. Uh, then I did another you know had to go back and paint most of this again and then now what I've just done is a little light wash with an actual dark blue, which kind of really looks nice. So, uh, big recovery there, but the mummy's curse is real. Uh, moving on. Uh, I mentioned that, you know, the instructions aren't always too clear on a whole bunch of things like, you know, where do you place this motor exactly? How far further and back? And I mentioned I wanted to have that face stand out, which is now glued in place here. So anyhow, by the time I put the motor in place, uh, everything was fine. I, you know, made my own wire for the uh, fuel, uh, fuel line and things like that. But then when it came to putting on the snakes, I realized that the tails were, you know, butting up against the motor and I, you know, couldn't fit them in. So what I did was I took my heat gun and I just, you know, curl the tails in different directions to get them all aligned. Uh, I also used the heat gun to align, you know, or closely align all the heads so that when it comes to putting the bone later on, it can grab onto something. And um, other people have mentioned that it's it's kind of hard to do on the kit. So I think I've solved that problem uh, there. Um, now, when I was doing the heat gun, it, it brings me over to another thing. 
the obelisk over here. Uh, basically, I primed it in black, and my plan here is that, you know, after I had put some putty and things like that, I primed it in black, and I think I'm just going to go and do some dry brushing to get the colors out, and my multiple passes, so that I, I keep all that black, you know, inside all the uh, indents over here. So uh, that's my plan, but when I had the heat gun out to do this kind of stuff, I thought, well, maybe it's I can try taking you know one of those dollar store snakes and you know curling it with the heat gun so that it kind of fits on top of this thing i'm not sure if it's going to work or not i had limited success with the heat gun shaping this thing it doesn't really it's not made to shape you know i a bit kind of like what i wanted it shape but not exactly so i don't know if i'm going to end up gluing this with ca glue or maybe you know dishing it all together if it doesn't look nice so i'll give it another shot after i've uh, painted this now, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the palm tree. Okay, I found it. The uh, palm tree. So again, I had two reference videos and one of them was to use uh, twine to create the bark, which I've done over here. And you can see how it's, you know, palm trees are larger at the bottom. So extra layers down here. And then I used PVA glue. And then also once it was all in place to really get it to set, uh, again, I watered down the PVA glue and really soaked it over here and uh, that worked really really well uh sanding like the little bits and pieces that still stick out doesn't work well very well but what does work well is actually putting this under a flame like it won't burn and you know you use one of those long stemmed or lighters even and i still have some more to do over here because i went back in and put some more glue but it it just burns off these little things sticking out so that was um you know i'm happy with how that turned out then I mentioned uh, I wanted to get the leaves and uh, the second video, another video suggested you get these, uh, you know, dollar store leaves or, uh, you know, plastic leaves for uh, from flowers and things like that. So I found in a thrift shop a few snippets over here and uh, I think these are going to work really well. I did a test on one of them and basically what you do is you have to cut it into the shape you know, uh, elongated, kind of like of an eye, and then you cut out, you know, uh, where the fronds are. And I think this is going to look really, really nice once I have, you know, a whole bunch of leaves sticking them in there, uh, and then, uh, you know, adding those coconuts I mentioned. So uh, the only issue I have right now is that the base I originally planned on having it with, you know, this and this and the car and him, you know, sticking out his bum there. Uh, I'm going to need a bigger base, but that's not an issue. I have a lot of wood. And then uh, try to make kind of like a sand dune effect where he's on sand and, uh, you know, these things sticking out one, one at an angle or something like that. So we're going to give it a shot, but hopefully uh, we won't have to deal with the uh, mummy's curse anymore after this. All right, we mentioned, uh, you know, the... Uh, the mummy's curse before uh and you know i mentioned a few instances where i had a few problems with this kit but uh what i didn't realize is that the uh, curse struck way way much earlier than i thought and uh maybe a number of you people who are familiar with this kit realize what my mistake was very early on in the building uh, process uh if you could see over here in the uh the box art you know his arm is uh, his left arm is a little bit raised compared to his right and it is it's it's supposed to be raised and If you look at the instruction, it's even you know more pronounced He's he's got a way up there and that's supposed to have that shovel waving it up in the air but uh, As I was building it and again because this kit really doesn't have any divot points or uh, you know places where you have recesses that or you know can see how pieces are supposed to be glued together when i built it i built it with that arm down so uh i thought about you know re going back and taking it off now that i know that the white spirits will take off the glue easily but i said i'm not going to go back and paint it in you know a third time and all that stuff so i just built it as is it's uh, not complete still a few pieces to go on over here but uh, it's getting there now and uh, this has been a very cursed build of, uh, you know, things falling off after being glued and you think it's set and it's not and, you know, positioning things. It's, it's really, it was really tough. 
So, uh, I have been making some progress on the base. Uh, this is now the, uh, the obelisk that's painted, uh, roughly. And I started making this base where I have some wood under here and chunks of wood and plaster. And I've con completed the, the palm tree here. Came out really, really nice. And, uh, I've got some coconuts painted now. I've got some coconut, actual coconut uh, uh, strands uh, husk over here that I'm going to be gluing on to that and basically what I'm doing here is layering some plaster and then hopefully I can smooth it out to really have it look you know like with a sand base over here um, and then coat it you know put you know coat, coat it with sand um, the only issue I've had so far really is uh, that it's, t it's taking, you know, much more time than I thought. I'm sanding this down and smoothing it out with other various tools to get it smooth so that when I have the sand there, it's really going to look like a sand dune and things like that. So coming along, a little more work. It's, you know, this has been a very, very long build for a n number of reasons. Some are not technical, but uh, it's coming along. Okay, there it is. It's uh, finally done. A uh, lot of trials and tribulations, as I mentioned. Uh, I had a lot of things going on as I was building this, uh, hence it was a really, really slow build. Uh, you know, a few a few minutes here and there, you know, um, over a much uh, lengthier period of time than I had hoped for. Uh, I think I mentioned it that others had mentioned that you really can't get this belt behind him supposed to hold him in place but uh it's not needed and it doesn't fit uh, at least i could not get it to fit the pit you know the, the way i put the body in there and uh it's no big deal but i really look like how it you know look looks in the end here uh the little small modifications i did i like the how the diorama came around uh, the palm tree the uh the obelisk here it's uh really really uh it's a it's a hard kit to build for a number of reasons, but I think it's worth it in the end. And again, it's it's a really cool concept with the wacky, you know, monster mobiles and things like that. So I'll you know, try to bring it up there. You can see a little bit more. Uh, looks nice. I put three coconuts on the bottom there. The rest of the coconuts are up in the tree and uh, it looks nice. What can I say? I'll add a nice addition to the... Uh, the chariot the, the chariot to the uh, the line uh and hopefully i do have a few more from this line the only one i don't have is the godzilla one but uh hopefully i'll get to them eventually you know the whole series so hope you enjoyed it looking forward to the next mo mo um, video and hopefully it won't take as long this time